Before we leave the topic of conditionals, there's one other uh, kind of related thing that we should discuss, and that's the topic of bitwise arithmetic. And it's closely related actually to the logic that we've done. We've been doing our logic as Boolean logic. So we've had, for example, true and false. The AND operator, the OR operator, the XOR operator, and the NOT operator were all things that worked on Boolean values. So in some ways you can think of a Boolean as being a single bit of information, though it's often not stored that way in the computer for, uh, for efficiency reasons. But that's kind of the amount of information that it represents. If you recall, all the numbers that we use, for example, 127, are actually stored in the computer in binary format. So they are a set of ones and zeros. And if I were to pick a slightly different number, I could get a zero in there. Each one of these can be thought of as being its own Boolean. So an int actually has, in some sense, 32 different Boolean values inside of it. And that is the concept behind doing bitwise arithmetic. Because you can actually do ands and ors across both of those. So let's take a slightly different value. So instead of 127 and 123, uh, how about we do 126? Okay, so 123 and 126. What is this going to do? Well, it takes each bit and it does a logical and between them. So this highest bit will stay on, the next one will stay on, the next one will stay on, the next one will stay on. But this one, because there's a zero there, it's going to be off in the result. And the first one's going to be off in the result. So basically, the two bits that are zeros here are going to be off. And if we look at the binary representation, you can see that's exactly what happened. So all the bits where it was on in both of the inputs uh, are now off. And this allows us to do something that's commonly referred to as bit masking, where we can pull out just particular uh, bits from something. A lot of times, for example, you might do an AND of 255, because that has eight on bits and that will pull off the lowest byte of a value. Note that this AND is just a single AND. That's what does our bitwise AND. Similarly, I can do ORs. So for example, 7 OR, let's go with 33. Okay. Well, to understand that result, we can take 7.2 binary string and 33 two binary string. Uh, the seven does not have the leading zeros on it. So this one lines up with that one. This one lines up with that zero. This one lines up with that zero. And then the seven is all zeros above that. So zero, zero, and then where the 33 has a one, the seven has a zero. And if you look at the 39, it has the three bits that were on in the seven all turned on, as well as the one here, because it only keeps things that were turned on in one or the other, doesn't matter which one. If we do an XOR instead, then that lowest bit will be turned off, because it was on in both the seven and the 33, and XOR being the exclusive or only allows you, you can only get a one if it was on in one or the other, but not both. So we've seen bitwise and, bitwise or, I said the and is used for bit masking, or can be used to combine uh, things together so that you get, in some ways you can think of it as, as the union. All of the bits that were on in either one of them will be on in the result. Another helpful operator, now when we were dealing with Boolean logic, we had the bang operator, which did not. In the case of bitwise logic, we have a tilde operator. So if I do tilde seven, I actually get negative eight. And then the question is, well, why? Negative eight dot two 
binary string is a whole bunch of ones with the bottom three as zeros. Well, if you recall, seven is just three ones that are on. So what happened is the 32 bits, all the zeros that aren't drawn here, are flipped over to ones, and then these three are flipped to zero. And that's why when we do tilde seven, we get negative eight. The tilde inverts all of the bits in there. Now in order to make these operations more useful, we often combine them with uh, three other operators that do what's called bit shifting. So greater, less than, less than, and greater than, greater than, effectively push bits around. Now to help you understand this, think in decimal. What happens when I multiply things by <clears throat> various powers of 10? Yeah, well, it just moves the numbers over. You've known this for a long time. Uh, in a way, you can think of this as decimal shifting. Okay, Multiplying by 10 moves the number up to the left. Multiplying by 100 moves it up twice. Dividing by 10, especially if you limit yourself to just integers, pushes things down to the right. In binary, you could do that by multiplying by powers of 2 or dividing by powers of 2. But because this is such a common thing, there is actually an operator for it. So 1 upshifted 0. Um, it doesn't go anywhere, so it's still 1. If I upshift it by 1, it becomes 2. If I upshift it by 2, it becomes 4. If I upshift it by 3, it becomes 8. Well, 8.2 binary string is a 1 followed by three zeros. So we took the 1 and we just shifted it up 1, 2, 3 spaces, and now there's three zeros uh, down below it. To see how downshifting works, let's take another number something that might be a little bit more complex. So for example, 34 is 100010. If I take 34 and I downshift it by one, I get 17. And if we look at the binary value of 17, you can see that we took this number and we just shifted it over to the right one and we dropped off that zero. If we take the 34 and downshift it by 2, we get a value of 8, and that's because we push this down by 2, cut those off, and we're left with 1, 0, 0, 0. So going back to the bit masking and, uh, and oring things together, why would I ever want to do this? Well, let's imagine that I had a value that was uh, inside of an int, and I wanted to store multiple things inside of it. Now this might seem like an odd thing to do, but it turns out it's very standard. If you've ever worked with websites, you might have seen colors represented on websites as things like this. Okay, uh, They are often represented as combinations of hexadecimal digits. I'll turn up the, in the form of red, green, and blue. So this color would be heavy on blue, uh, with about half as much red and a little bit more green than red. And of course, that's a, some decimal number there. What if I had the values for this amount of red, this amount of green, and this amount of blue? So val red equals, I can actually do 0x55, val green equals 0x66, and val blue equals 0x AA. So those are 85, 120, and 170 respectively. And a lot of times people will just enter it this way, but I wanted to make it clear that I'm taking these off of the, the hexadecimal value. How could I take red, green, and blue and combine them back together to get my large number? Well, I could take my red value and I need to move it up by two bytes because each one of these two hexadecimal digits takes up a byte. I mean, it takes up eight bits. So I need to move the red up 16 spaces, okay? And then I want to combine that and I can or it with the green moved up eight digits and combine that with the blue value. And if I do that, you'll see that the decimal number that I get out of here 
is exactly that decimal number there. And I could take that value, res 30 to hex string, and see that I have that number coming out. Okay, so using the bit shifting and the or, I can combine values together to get like compress a red, a green, and a blue all into one integer. This is something that's done pretty much in all graphics. Using an and, I can do the opposite. So I can take my 5596842, that res 30, and I can do an and with 255, which happens to be 0xff, oops, 0xff in hexadecimal. And that bit mask just pulls off the lowest byte. And so I get my 170, which is what our blue value was. If I wanted the green value, I could take and downshift it by eight and I get the amount of green we have. And if I downshift it by 16, I could get the red. And so that's how and works as a bit mask. So that is bitwise arithmetic. Uh, it's very handy when it comes in handy. It's also something that you might see every so often, so you should be familiar with it.